It says, and it shall come to pass that before they call, are you seeing it? You know, sometimes we're saying we, we, we want to pray, you know, so that um, things will happen, so God will hear us, God will do something. But look at what God is saying. He said it shall come to pass. The, the come to pass has come now because this is our year of favor. The set time to favor us has come. So this is the time. We're living in that time now that I'm about to describe. It says, and it shall come to pass that before they call, what will happen? Read your Bible. Before they call, I will do what? Before. Before I hear mommy, I've already answered. Before I call Leo, Leo has already answered. God is saying, before you even call, I will answer. He said, and while they are yet speaking, I will hear. That's why he's told us that he's willing. He's willing. So this year, see, I've, I've discovered something. It's, not, it's never so much how much you want from God. The truth is, how much can you receive? Have you heard the story of two men that were praying once? They were both praying in the same place. And one man wanted $5,000. And he was praying for $5,000. Another man wanted $1 million. But they're both praying to the same God. One for $5,000, one for $1 million. And the man that was praying for, for $5,000 was making so much noise. And he's stopping the man that was praying for one million. The man turned to him and said, what, what do you want? He said, I want $5,000. He said, take it and go. <laughs> but you know what? <laughs> the man got his, got his prayers answered. <laughs> but they were both praying to the same God. But different faiths, different expectations. And the same God answered both of them. So it's not, it's not a matter of how much do you want? is how much you can receive. How much can your faith take? Praise the Lord. Okay. So, we're talking about first fruits. You know, we've been talking about why we give offerings, tithes, first fruits. We're answering the question of why. Why, why, why? You know, like I, I like to say, Pastor Chris said this. He said, the man that knows what to do will always have a job. The man that knows why will be his boss. And that's the truth. Praise the Lord. So, we want to know why we do it. Because when we understand why, we get better results. We're able to do it without trial and error. We're able to do it without assumptions. We know why it works. We have faith in the principle. Praise the Lord. So, last week, we talked about why we give t um, first fruits. Specifically, because there are different kinds of offerings in the scriptures. Why we give first fruits. And we gave four reasons why. I don't want to repeat them. I want to make sure that you heard. Because the message was not for me, because I, I know it already. But I want to make sure that you heard. So who wants to help me with one? One reason why we give first fruits. Brother Joseph. No, you can say it into the mic. Okay. To honor God. We give first fruits to honor God. Yes. We're not just saying that. The Bible actually says it. If you read Proverbs chapter 3, verse 9, the Bible says, Honor the Lord with your substance and with the first fruits of all your increase. So Proverbs chapter 3, verse 9 tells us we give our first fruits, first of all, to honor God. I, I've told you before that you can't say you worship God, and the Bible lets us know, read Psalm 96. You can't say you're honoring God and worshiping Him and glorifying God without your offering being involved. You can't. You can't say God is your God. The connection between you and God is your offering. Read from, read from Genesis. They started giving God offerings right from Genesis. It came before the law. And like I said last week, if somebody tells you, or you know when you come to church, it doesn't matter whether you give offering or not, the collection box, ah, is God a charity case? The collection box is at the back. If you want to, you can give. No, not with God. Not with God. It's not, it's, not a, it's not your choice. It's part of your worship to give an offering to God. Praise the Lord. And 
um, so we've seen number one. We give our first fruits to honor God. Another reason, Sister Margaret. I hope it's not only going to be the choir, you know, that will answer. Amen. Amen. She said, who heard what she said? You heard her? Okay. Let me repeat what she said. She said, to cause the blessing to rest upon your house, to rest upon your home. We give our first fruits. And that's in Ezekiel chapter 44. Um, let, me ch- let me check the exact. Yes, Eze- Ezekiel chapter 44, verse 30. So we give the first fruits. To cause the blessing, because you bring the first fruit to the priest so he can bless you. To cause the blessing to rest upon your house. And what is a blessing? That thing which empowers you to prosper. What is a blessing? A blessing can be described. Like what happened with Brother Pedro. He did not go for an interview. He didn't apply for the job. The job sought him out in his house. And he sent the CV the night before. By the next morning, the the boss, the lady's boss, 9 a.m., had sent him an email and said, you are the person I want. No interview. Just the CV. And then by by the next week, the director came and signed his employment papers. By Friday, look at the speed. By Friday, he was at the embassy getting his work permit without payment. So you're a special case. So uh, that's a description of the blessing. You don't see the blessing, but you see the result of it. Praise the Lord. One, one other reason why we give the first fruits. One other reason, Brother Leo. So, um, so that our barns will be filled with plenty. We give the first fruits so that our barns, you know, the Bible uses the word barns. Barns is another word for storehouses. And when they're talking to, when that scripture was written to people whose main occupation was pastoral, they had farms and they had um, sheep and cattle and all those things. So they said said barns, but it actually means storehouses, store places where you store things. Now, I don't have a barn, but I have places where I store things, isn't it? Where do I store my food? In my cupboard. Where do I store my clothes? In my wardrobe. So that means if he's saying that my store, my store places or my storehouses will be filled with plenty, it means my cupboards will be full of food. It means my wardrobe will be full of clothes. Let's break it down. Because I'm not a farmer. Is that not right? Where do I store my shoes? My shoe rack. Some people have a wardrobe for shoes. Or under the bed. Under my bed will be full of shoes. Praise the Lord. Where do you store money? Some people say under my pillow. (laughs) Whether it's under your pillow, in a box in your garden, whether it's in the bank, as long as you store money there, they say your storehouses will be full of plenty. So we are giving our first fruits. I've just given three reasons, but you know, last Sunday I gave four. Now we're going to look a little bit more at the first fruit. What the Bible says. Now, what I'm going to share with you is not, is not conclusive because the first fruit is mentioned about 32 times in the scripture and, and some, sometimes, you know, the context of it is long. But let's look at a few things. So let's go to Exodus chapter 23. First of all, to show that we didn't make it up. We didn't make it up. It's actually in the Bible. It's there. Now we have a YouTube channel um, that's called CE Colchester 01. It's on YouTube. And what what we've been doing, we've been putting these messages online. So if you want to go back and reference them and listen to them, you'll get it on our YouTube channel. Later on, the um, technical department will put the link the URL so you can have it and use it as a reference for later. So, um, Exodus chapter 23, verse 19. 
Let's see some of the things. And you remember last week, we found out that first fruit is also mentioned in the New Testament as well. The Bible says, if the first fruit is holy, the lump is also holy. What does that mean? It means that if the first part that you bring is sanctified unto God, the rest of all that belongs to you is also sanctified unto God. Which means that the first fruit, given the first fruit, did not stop in the, in the Old Testament. And the, the truth is that the first fruit offering is the very first kind of offering mentioned at all in the Bible. Praise the Lord. What Abel brought to God was first fruit. The Bible says Abel brought the first leans of his flock. The first leans. So when, it, when you're talking about animals, the word used is not first fruit because animals are not fruits. The word used is first leans. You're, you're talking about animals. When you're talking about something that comes out of the ground, the word used is first fruits. So to generalize the whole thing, generally it's called first fruits, but when you're specifically talking about animals, it's called first leans. And that's what Abel brought to God. And the Bible says, God had honor unto Abel's offerings. But what happened to Cain's? It was rejected. Cain brought offerings. But what God wanted was not just offerings. God wanted first fruits at that time. Praise the Lord. Okay, so Exodus chapter 23 verse 19. The Bible says, The first of the first fruits of thy land thou shalt bring into the house of the Lord thy God. He didn't say, take the first fruit to the nearest charity organization. He didn't say that. He didn't say, take the first fruit to somebody that you know is in need. God understands this person is in need. Give to God what belongs to God. Give to people what belongs to them. Praise the Lord. Don't say, um, you know, um, it's not better for me to... Sometimes, sometimes people even say for tithes. It's not better for me to give my 10% to this charity. You can give 10% to the charity, no problem. God, does, God did not say you can even give 90% to the charity. It's not a problem with God. But God's 10% belongs to God. Do you get it? Also, when it comes to your first fruits... Know what belongs to him. Know, understand what belongs to him. And understand that God is a spirit. He is God. And God who made us has required of us this. So when we want to give people in need, ensure that you do that. But God's one, you give it to him first. Because when God promotes you, you're able to do more for others. Is that not true? It's true. So he says, the first of the first fruits of thy land, thou shalt bring into the house of the Lord thy God. Then he says, thou shalt not seeth a kid in his mother's milk. That's an addition. He's not talking about the first fruits. Let me read it in another translation. It says, each year. So you can see that it's every year. Hmm? Each year, bring the best part of your first harvest to the place of worship. That's the CEV translation. So it says, bring each year. So every year in Christ Embassy, we have a first fruit service. And it's usually the first Sunday in February. So that we can bring to God our first fruit of the year. Because we're saying, Lord, this is our first fruit. The Bible says we should honor him with our first fruit. Honor him with our increase, with the, with the, with the first fruit of all our increase. So we're bringing it to God. And saying, Lord, this one is yours. We know that if the first fruit is sanctified unto you, the rest of everything that belongs to us, that means that we can, we can insist that our car will not break down unnecessarily. In fact, what is unnecessarily? It should not break down. It's true. See, even if there's something wrong with your, with your tire, God can help you with that tire. I'm not saying you should not fix it. Fix it. Fix it. Fix your tire. Drive legally. Drive legally. But who told you somebody cannot buy the tire for you? Somebody can. If they tell you the tire, is, the tire will cost 180 pounds, you can get it for 20, new. You just, you just have to be at the right place at the right time. Why? Because you're favored. 
Because God's blessing. God has said, I don't want her to spend money on this because her money has been sanctified. I, told, I, I, I think I've told you this testimony before. I drove to Chelmsford for a meeting. Uh, it was a meeting of, of the pastors on well, Saturday. And um, as I was driving back, somebody stopped me and said, there's something wrong with your tire. I drove from London to Chelmsford. So, you know, there was a, a tire place down the road, so I, I drove into it and I told the man that, could he fix it, you know, could he change my tire and all that. So, I had never, when I bought that car, I bought that car on eBay. <laughs> I had never opened the boot thing, you know where they put the tire. I had never seen it. So, I do not recommend it. I'm just telling you what happened. And when the man opened the tire and brought it out, he found out that the person that sold me the car had put the wrong size of tire. In fact, the tire he put was for, the car was a, a Nissan. And the tire he put was for maybe like a Mazda or something. And then the wrong, sh the wrong size. So he looked at the tire and said, this tire is good for no devil. I said, what does that mean? He said, this, you can't fix the tire. You can't, you can't use it to drive. I said, okay, but what do I do? He said, okay, you know what? Let me fix this other... Then he decided, he decided to fix the, the tire. I, think, I don't know if the same tire he gave me a tire. I can't remember exactly what happened. But he fixed it for me. I said, oh, you know what? Don't drive above 50 miles per hour and don't drive to London with it. Go to town and fix it. But each tire, each tire in town will cost you 180, um, 180 pounds. 180 pounds. I had that on my card, but I didn't want to spend it. So I said, okay, how much do I owe you? He said, no, nothing. Just go. So first of all, when I was telling somebody else that story, he said, you mean you went to a mechanic in the UK? He, fixed, he, he replaced your tire for you and didn't charge you anything. I said, yes. He said, you're lucky. I said, I'm not lucky. I'm favored. And so I drove the car to the town. And you know what? They said it was, he told me that it would be 180 pounds. I replaced the tire for 44 pounds. Brand new. But I was thinking, I drove all the way from London with that tire. It wasn't when I was leaving that the tire was bust. It was while I was driving. But God preserved me. Praise the Lord. Now, like I said, it's not recommended, but see, we have to understand that there's some things that we do that produce divine protection. And that's one of those things. So, we are told that we should bring every year, bring the best part of your first harvest to the place of worship. It specifically tells you where to do it. So, don't ask any question anymore. Where should I take it to? The place of worship. That's where. Not to the hospital. The place. Not to a relative. The place of worship. Somebody, somebody once told her daughter and her son-in-law that don't give your tithes in church. Then you should bring your tithes to me. Because I also am a minister. But she's not their minister. Where's the scripture for it? But she's a minister, so bring your tithes to me. So it's not right. You take your tithes, you take your offerings, you take your first fruits to the house of God, to the place of worship. Now let's look at Exodus chapter 23. Again. And we'll look at verse 16. So we said next week, which is the first Sunday um, in February, we're having our first fruit service. So look at what the Bible says. It says, and the feast of harvest, the first fruits of thy labors. See, we're not, we're not farmers. So we, when we talk about harvest, we, we, we don't do harvests, do we? But I thank God the Bible tells us that it's the first fruit of your labor, of your work. What has come out of the work you've done? So for you that works, what has come out of the work you do? Let me break it down. Don't be uncomfortable. This is the house of God. And I will just say it as it is. What has come out of the work that you do? What do they call it at work? Uh -huh. Are you people comfortable? Because the Bible says it. It says the first fruit of your labors. Your labor is your work. What do you get? You get what? A salary or wages. 
So God is saying, bring it. He's not even talking about the gifts you get. This is not the gift. This is, this is not somebody gave me something. This is the what, what you've gotten from your labors. From your labors. From the work you've done. From, from that, you know when you wake up 6 a.m. And you do 14 hours. And they paid you. God is saying that money they paid you. For working 14 hours. Bring it. Huh? And you know. Some, let me put it this way. You see, I'm being flexible. I'll, be, I'll, 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 I'll give a flexible way. But really, what a lot of brethren do in Christ's embassy, they bring the first month. They bring their first month's salary. And that's what, that's what I used to do. Praise the Lord. But you see, last, right now, I'm not, I'm not in a job. I'm working on establishing a business. But if I was in a job, what I would bring as my first fruit will be my first month's income. So I'm not asking you to do something I don't do. This is what I do. For some people, their faith is not there. They need to build their faith to that level. Let me even say this. Some of you, when you start a new job, maybe there were three months you were not working. Huh? And you're thinking, okay, when I get my first job, I'm going to give my, uh, will I give my first fruit? But I've not been working for the last six months. God understands that that first salary, if, you were not, if that job did not come that sixth month, would you, would you, you will still have nothing. Isn't it? You will still have nothing. So think about it that way. I, you see, I hadn't worked, 2003, I hadn't worked for like three years. When my first job came, if, I just knew that money was not for me. That money is my first fruit. So because all these months, there was nothing to give anyway. And I survived. So why would I think I will not survive this month now that the money has come? That means you're just lying to yourself. That's the truth. It means you don't want to give it. And you know, you know that thing that you hold on to when it doesn't belong to you. You see, you can take something that belongs to somebody else. Eh? And it's okay. But there are some things that when it doesn't belong to you and it belongs to a tough person or somebody who is very principled, it's, it's, it's tough. Do you get it? The one that belongs to God, give it to him. You know why? Because you can give me something and not, well, not me. You can give some people something and nothing will come out of it. But you cannot give to God. Because in God there's a blessing. So when he's saying bring it, it's because he knows that this thing is your connection to the blessing. That's why he's saying it. There's some people every month, that 10% that they don't want to give, something will happen to that 10%. Every month, something, they will break their car, they will break the window. They will break the windshield. Something will be stolen, something will break down. Somebody will get sick and the money has to be sent. It just happens. And I, I always remember what my mom said. My mom said she noticed that every time, every month, she never had enough on her nurse's salary. And something would always happen. But when she began to give her first fruit, her tithe, I mean, when she began to give her tithe, she noticed that she always had enough. And those things that used to happen before stopped happening. Why? The Bible says the devourer. But he will be rebuked. That means that he has the right to operate in the lives of those who don't. And sometimes, what, what you lose, you don't even know. You may not even know what you lost. Because you didn't know that there was an opportunity coming that was taken away. I've noticed some people that don't give their tithes. Even when opportunities come, they don't see it. I've, see, I've seen it. Even when, when it comes. And sometimes, you know, you actually put the opportunity in their hand. And after a while, they say, no, I don't want this, I don't want this. Then later on, They'll regret it. You know, I've observed, I said, you know what? I now know why this is happening. This person does not give tithes. And I, I told you of the story of a, a particular man. He used to be in Christ's embassy culture, so, but he's um, relocated now. And when I first came to this church, because I, did, I didn't start this church, I was sent here. When I first came to this church, he had begun to have some issues in his life, you know, and his marriage and all that. So he came to me. And it was specifically for his finances. Things were really tough. He wanted me to pray. 
about his finances. And I always, when you come to me about finances especially, the first question I'll ask you, do you tithe? Do you, do you give your tithe? Because how can I pray? Because whatever is operating your life may be operating your life legally. So I have to first find out. And he said, how can I give my tithe? Things are so tough. You know, I can't do this because I have my mortgage. My wife is doing her master's. You know, this, 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 this. I have to, you know, he had all the reasons why he couldn't. I said, well, you have to give your tithes. That's just the truth. Because it's a faith thing. You have to know that this God that you're coming to, he has required this of you. Because his, his wife decided to do her, her master's. They did not think, how, do, how can we afford it? They didn't think that. They went for the masters. And the masters is thousands. How much is the tithe? Hundreds. People that don't, it's a decision. It's not because they can't. It's a decision. So, anyway, one day, then he told me, he said, um, I'm also beginning to have some trouble at work. There's this particular new boss that I got, and the boss doesn't seem to like me. So I counseled him and all that, but, and I left him. Then he came to me one day, and he said, Pastor, I need you to pray for me, because this boss has gone to investigate my past. He had been in that job for seven years, and they liked him, and he was doing well. Then this boss came from nowhere, and decided to look into his employment records. How did he get employed? What is the person's business? The devourer was at work. Big time. And they found out that when he worked in America 11 years ago, he had troubles with this. He had a problem with the system. Because there was, there was a crime. He, well, he, 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 he works with vulnerable people. And there was something he did that was not right. He had to leave America, leave his position, and go back to Africa. And then a few years later, he came back to the UK. The woman traced him to America and found out the issue he had, which they did not originally know when they gave him the job. <laughs> he not only lost the job, by the time we heard from him, he was, he was running away from the police. They were looking for him. But you know, God can cover the eyes of some things. What, what kind of thing was working? It was definitely not bless, a blessing. It was definitely not favor. It was disfavor. For you to go and look for somebody's, somebody's case history 11 years ago in the States. But we know of people. I know of people personally. They've said, you know what? You, we want to give you this job. They don't have the papers. They said, give us your passport so we can stamp, we can prove, we can prove you have papers. She, said, she sent her passport. She said, they want my passport. There's nothing on the passport. They took the passport, they scanned it and sent it back to her. They said, you are employed. And she was working in the UK in social services. She sent them the passport. She sent it to them. She didn't say anything. And they scanned it. They, didn't, they, they saw what God wanted them to see. So he said, I will rebuke the devourer. When God knows that some, somebody is coming to cause you trouble. This one came. And you know, some, some, you know I'm originally from Africa. And sometimes we're very, we, look, we look at things in a very spiritual way. We think, you know, this person is occultic. This person is fetish. This person is after my life. This happened here in the UK. And the person that did it to him was not African. Because life is spiritual. You don't have to be in Africa to, to experience spiritual things. Praise the Lord. So, have you seen that? It says, and the, and the feast of harvest, Exodus chapter 23 verse 16, the first fruits of thy labors, of thy what? Mm-hmm. Which thou hast sown in the field, and the, and the feast of ingathering, which is in the end of the year, when thou hast gathered in thy labors out of thy field. 
So you should bring it. Now let's look at it in the Good News translation. He says, you shall keep the feast of harvest, of the first fruits of your labor, of what you sow in the field. You shall keep the feast of ingathering at the end of the year, when you gather in from the field the fruit of your labor. Praise the Lord. So he's told us what we're going to do. He's describing what we're doing next week. So what we're doing is not something that we just created in Christ the Mercy Colchester. It's something we ought to do. Praise the Lord. But we've seen that there's a blessing. But again, you know, all these things is a choice. If you don't give your tithe, I will not follow you to your house with a stick and whip you. I won't. I will treat you the same way as anybody else. Have you ever, not, have you ever some of you that don't pay your tithe, I'm not going to ask you any questions now. Because I look at the, at the records. Have you, ever, have you ever seen me treat you differently? Huh? Have, have I ever treated you differently? Because you know yourselves that you don't pay your tithes. <laughs> you know yourself. <laughs> so I've not treated you differently. Because I won't. It's because it's between you and God. It's between you and the blessing you want. And it's between you and your faith. Some people, it takes, it takes them faith to get there. But when the faith comes and they begin to act on the faith, they begin to see changes. Praise the Lord. They begin to, and you know, you know why I'm so pleased to, to be in this church, in Christ the Mercy Colchester? Because we act on the word and we get results. That's why we always have testimonies. The testimonies are proof. You know, you know when Nicodemus came to Jesus in the night? He said something to Jesus. He said, no man can do these things except the Lord be with him. So we can't be having the testimonies because I'm telling you, the testimonies we have are not common. They are not. And, we, and they, are, they are regular. They are not like once a year. In this month alone, look at the testimonies we've had. In fact, I got an email from Sister Peace. She sent me an email. She said, she was thanking me, thank me for the word that I gave about cars. And you know, like I said, we didn't, we didn't pray to God for cars. We didn't say, God, the people in this church need cars. Nobody ever, no, 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 none of you came to me and said, Pastor, I need a car. But I was sitting down there and the Lord said, let them come next Sunday and they will get cars. It was God that wanted to give us, you know, you, sometimes you have an auntie that wants to bless you, isn't it? God is our father. He says, these people need cars. I'm going to give them cars. So, and I said, if you already have a car, identify somebody that you're going to give your car to when you get a better car. So, Sister P sent me an email and said, Sister Agnes came to her and said, um, when I get my new car, I'll give you my car. Praise the Lord. And you know the interesting thing? People that are getting cars don't drive. <laughs> I've noticed that the people that have been told that you're going to get a car are not drivers. They don't, they don't even have a provisional license. So, <laughs> whether Farah is testifying because he knows his own, his own, his own has already happened. Uh, we'll, I'll tell you that one later. And um, she was so excited. She called her uncle. I told her uncle, look at, look at what's happened. Somebody's going to give me her car. Do you know what her uncle said? He said, oh, I wanted to, I wanted to be the first person to buy you a car. Can you imagine? Then he said, I'm going to pay for your driving lessons. <laughs> Can you imagine? So, we, the, the, the testimonies are coming. You know why? God is with us. I know why. You know why we're seeing them? When we hear the word, we act. The Bible says, it is the doers that are blessed, not the hearers. And in Christ's embassy, Colchester, we are doers. So we're experiencing the blessing. That's why this song, this song is, is my song now. God is willing to do. God is willing to do. That thing that you want. Healing, he's willing to heal you. Your heart, he's willing to make your heart strong. Your blood, he's willing to cleanse your blood. They say it's HIV. So what? You know, it's, it's us that we, we hear some things, we shiver. Well, not me, I don't shiver. Cancer. People, ah, cancer. When you now say, uh-huh, they, they'll repeat it because they, they're not sure you heard them. 
Or when they say HIV, they'll repeat it again because you say, oh, HIV. And you say it casually. They say, Pastor didn't hear me. I heard you. But you know, it, when, it, when HIV hears Jesus, hey, HIV understands that name. It, HIV is waiting for you to understand the name that you have. Cancer is waiting for you to understand the life that you have. Can God have cancer? Can he have cancer? So if God can, cannot have cancer, why should I have cancer? I have the life of God. And I understand it. Praise the Lord. So we've seen something about the first fruits. We're supposed to bring it where? And what is the first fruit? First fruit of our what? Okay. So if you're a businessman, you understand what that means. Now, some of you don't have a job. So what? So does it mean that when you come next week, that you're okay? Huh? I don't, God knows I'm not working. Pastor knows I'm not working, so I'll just give my ordinary offering. No. Don't deny yourself of the blessing. I told you again about Luke's friend, Christmas time. He said, I want to buy presents for my family. What did he say? He said, I'm going to go and sell my game, my game console so I, I can have money to buy presents for my family at Christmas. Now, you, look at what you have. There's something that you have. In fact, even if there's nothing in your house to sell, you can say, Lord, I receive first fruits. I receive. But before you even get there, say, Lord, open my eyes to what I already have. Because I don't want to come in God, to God's presence on Sunday without a first fruit. You don't want to do that. Praise the Lord. And let me also tell you again, this first fruit service that we're having. So when I'm telling you about the first fruit, don't think is this whole message is just a manipulative thing to make you bring your first fruit next Sunday. Let me tell you why it's not. Because everything you give next Sunday, we are giving. Do you get it? We're not keeping. It's not going to stay with us. We are also giving it as our first fruits. So when I'm telling you to do it, I'm telling you to do it for yourself. Because we as the church, we're doing it for the church. We're doing it for ourselves. So all of us, so all, all of us will be blessed together. Praise the Lord. Stand up on your feet. And I want you to talk to God about your first fruits. The Bible says that we honor the Lord with our first fruits. Proverbs chapter 3, verse 9. And with the substance, with our substance, and with the first fruit of all our increase, so shall our storehouses be filled with plenty. I want you to commit yourself to giving your first fruit and then saying that, Lord, the blessing that comes, where, where, there's, where there's plenty in, in, in my storehouses, in the things that I used to contain things, I will experience that blessing this year. This year. This, I will not lack. And this is, the first fruit is beyond lack. When you talk about first fruit, it's beyond lack to plenty. So it shall overflow with new wine. So shall your bands be filled with plenty. It doesn't say your needs shall be met. It's beyond that. So you want to experience the blessing of the first fruits. You want to experience this year. This year, you're going to insist. It's not going to be like last year. I'm going to honor the Lord with it. Remember the word that we got during the prayer meeting. He said, I will pour water upon him that, uh, upon him that is thirsty and floods upon the dry ground. I will pour my spirit upon your seed. So see the spirit of God being poured on your seed. And the Bible says that it shall spring up. There shall be a springing up this year in your life. There shall be a springing up. We prayed on Friday about supernatural prosperity. This year, we will experience supernatural prosperity. Not the one that we struggle for. I thank God. God has already begun to give us tokens. He's begun to give us signs of what he wants to do. There are things that we will walk in that we did not even look for. But God had already prepared it for us. 
and these things are coming to us by free course unhindered we will not need to struggle like everybody else struggles we will not need to labor for it like everybody else labors for it it not take time as it takes time for other people because there's a blessing that rests that rests that has come upon us as a mantle that has fallen upon us that's working in our lives so thank God next Sunday is an opportunity for all of us for us as a church it's an opportunity for us to take ourselves to another level financially and an opportunity for every individual to do the same thing Christ Embassy Colchester will never be the same again God has lifted us up God has exalted us he has promoted us and we are not just hearers of God's word we are doers as well and the Bible says it's the doers that are blessed so we are blessed in our doing Father God we give you the praise and the glory indeed we are blessed in our doing in Jesus name Amen please be seated